Hey folks, this is Kalani. One of the awesome features being showcased at BlizzCon for the new expansion, Battle for Azeroth, is Warfronts. If you've already checked out the Island Expeditions video, you know that that feature is more about fighting for new resources in the new areas we're exploring. But there's another part of war. Defending the home turf. That's what Warfronts are all about. They're the battles that are happening between the Horde and Alliance while they try to wrestle control of Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms from each other's grasp. So Warfronts are 20 player cooperative instances which really are all about that Horde versus Alliance theme. There's no uneasy truces, there's no greater good right now. It's two armies pitted against each other and they both are out for blood and glory and of course the resources and territory that you're fighting over. The Warfronts are heavily influenced by the Warcraft RTS series, and from the sounds of things you're basically going to be inside an RTS type battle, building bases, recruiting troops, and taking the fight to the enemy. You're playing this as one of the troops, one of the heroes, as opposed to the overseer or commander. You have to fight alongside the troops you build and recruit to lead your entire faction to victory. So where will these Warfronts take place? It seems like the Eastern Kingdoms is almost entirely under the control of the Alliance. Their push on the Undercity has definitely been successful, though we'll see if the Horde still inhabit the location at all. By the sounds of things for all terms and purposes during the Battle for Azeroth, the Undercity is lost to the Alliance and Darnassus might be lost to the Horde. Specifics about how that's going to work are still a little unclear, but the Alliance controls the vast majority of the Eastern Kingdoms and they want to secure that hold. There is still a Horde presence to the north with Silvermoon City, but the key location for the Eastern Kingdom's battle is Arathi Highlands. So that's where one of the Warfronts takes place, where the remaining members of the Horde will face off against the Alliance pushing north. Arathi Highlands is so important for the Alliance because apparently the Undercity is indefensible, so even though they manage to take it, they can't actually use it as a strategic position against the Horde, but they do still need to cut off the North so the Horde can't mount a counter assault. The Alliance have to hold here. The Horde, however, need to push the Alliance back. They need to prevent the Alliance from building up their armies and supplies, which they'll need to finish off the rest of the Horde in the Eastern Kingdoms. They need to strike now and use the Arathi Highlands as their new defensive position, seeing as they've already lost their only stronghold in this area. Arathi Highlands would also make for a great launching point to assault Gilneas, and they would cut off any hope of Alliance reinforcements by land. It's certainly a suitable area to fight over for both factions. The stronghold that we'll be fighting over will be Stromgard, which has seen quite a few updates. The Alliance will be trying to retake the stronghold to defend themselves against the Horde, and obviously the Horde will want to control it as well. That's the only Warfront we have any solid information about, but from how it's positioned on the front lines of both factions in the Eastern Kingdoms, we can hazard a guess that the Kalimdor Warfront will be positioned way up north, probably in Ashenvale. That's always been a hotly contested zone where the Alliance and Horde first meet each other in the questing experiences, and would make for a fantastic location for a zone-wide battle. So how are these Warfronts going to play out? Pretty much exactly like a Warcraft map would play out. You're going to have to build up your base, starting with the Town Hall for Alliance and the Great Hall for Horde. From there you're going to need to start gathering up resources like lumber and iron so you can start building up some of the other buildings and start your technology upgrades. You can also start taking over territory to unlock new buildings and new research and provide you with new opportunities on the battlefield. When it comes to base building, it's going to work almost exactly like the Warcraft RTS games. You'll build your main building, the Town Hall or Great Hall, then build barracks to start recruiting troops, which will also require some resources. Things have been kept almost identical to the Warcraft 3 technology trees. So barracks provide troops, the good old grunts and headhunters, footmen and riflemen, raider and knights will probably be in there as well. You can build an armory, which will provide you with all of your troop upgrade research and unlock the special buildings which provide the special troops, like building the Spirit Lodge to be able to recruit shaman. I hope most of the units are included to really give that sense of power progression when you get to the later stages of the Warfronts. Bringing true RTS gameplay into the world of Warcraft is fantastic, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. I hope it all works out to provide a fun and exciting addition to the game. So what about those 19 other players? Remember that Warfronts are a 20 player deal, and usually an RTS is just a solo experience and you have control over your base. Well, things are going to work similar to the buildings on the Broken Shore. Everyone will gather their own resources, you'll bring in your own lumber and your own iron, and you get to choose which buildings those resources go towards. So hopefully you'll be playing with 19 people that you actually want to be playing with, maybe some friends or guildies and you all know how you want this to play out. But even if you don't and you're with a 
four group of pugs, everyone can still contribute to whatever they want to contribute to, without any resources going to waste. When a building has enough resources to be built, the peons will run over and start knocking it all together. Overall, the choices are spread amongst the entire team, instead of just one player being in control. The goal of a warfront is to raid your opponent's base and kill their commander. To do this, you're going to have to recruit those troops and send them out onto the front lines, but you're also one of those troops as well. You're going to have to get right in the mix of things and lead your troops to victory. Sending wave after wave of troops to your enemies while you sit behind your walls probably won't get you very far. We're going to have to act like a commander instead of just being called a commander. But you're not the only faction out there. If you're the horde attacking the alliance, they're not just going to wait for you to come knocking at their doors. Similarly, if you're Alliance, the Horde won't just sit around and wait for you to bring the fight to them. The other faction will be out on the field as well, trying to take the resources that you're after and trying to control key points of the map. They're going to know the objectives of the map and work towards victory just as much as you. It's going to be Horde against Alliance, Army against Army, and whoever kills the enemy commander will win. So you're going to have to defend as well as attack. You need to defend the territory you take, you need to defend the resources you need, and you need to defend your commander if the enemy army gets too close. There are also battlefield events which pop up randomly on the map, and the team to complete the event will gain bonuses. The example given was a wealthy merchant appearing offering to pay for a group of mercenaries for your faction. It's going to be important to keep an eye on the map to take full advantage of anything that pops up. There's also plans to include different types of enemy commanders, which use different strategies to win. You might face off against a human commander who has improved footmen and knights and constantly makes use of those types of troops, or you might face a dwarven commander who has special dwarven units under his control. A variety of commanders will increase the replayability of the warfronts and make sure things are kept interesting. Apparently, we will also be able to research some Warfront technology outside of the Warfronts themselves, giving us an extra edge the next time we want to hop into play. I haven't actually mentioned this yet, but I guess I probably should, because everything that I've described so far sounds like an amazing PvP experience. But currently, the Warfronts are only going to be available as a PvE feature. The armies you will face are all NPCs. Any champions or heroes or commanders on the field from the opposite faction will also be NPCs. This is a 20-player PvE encounter, which is still probably going to be fantastically fun, but I think adding in an option for PvP later down the line could really take it to the next level. The island expeditions have differing difficulties, one of those being a PvP option, so hopefully the Warfronts will go the same way. If you're asking yourself when these Warfronts will be available for play, it seems like they will be more event-based rather than constantly available. That means we could see something similar to the Legion Invasion timers, where it's up and available for play for a chunk of time, then becomes unavailable as the armies regroup and all that jazz. I hope the times aren't as wonky or weird as the Legion invasions, but we'll have to wait and see. But that's all I have for Warfront so far. I can't wait to get my hands on this to really give you a proper preview of what this feature will look like, but that's it for this video. Do you think you'll spend more time with the Island Expeditions or the Warfronts? Leave all your thoughts and theories in the comment section below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.